Yo, Adam Saxton here with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. I don't know about you, but 2019 is in full swing. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. We've got a blog from Oost Oldfield. Hope I pronounced your name right. And in this blog post, he talks about whitelisting Azure IPs with Azure Key Vault. And you may be sitting there wondering, what the heck does this have to do with Power BI or any of the BI products? And by itself, it doesn't. And this is something I love doing from a support perspective, taking something that seems completely irrelevant and putting it into the context of BI products. So what you can do with this is glean some information of how you can use the Azure IP list that gets updated weekly and use PowerShell to add to your firewall list. So this could be Azure Analysis Services, it could be Azure Data Factory, it could be any type of Azure resource that you may be using where you need to go and modify those firewall items. And you need, may need to do that from an Azure IP whitelist to make sure, especially if you're in a VNet or some kind, that you want to allow those services in. So maybe it's Power BI service being able to get to your VNet inside of maybe a SQL database or something of that nature. So take this, look it over. If you have a need for something like a VNet or firewall needs with Azure, this could be helpful for you in a BI solution. Megan Longoria has got a blog post where she looks at, and I love this, thinking about those things in your BI solution and your architecture that you may just not be thinking about. So these are things outside of the big ticket items, right? So Power BI, your data warehouse, your ETL process, things of that nature. What you wanna think about are things related to that from an infrastructure perspective. So you need to think about Active Directory or Azure Active Directory. You need to think about things like dev and test environments, GitHub, all of these things that support your BI solution, but you may not be thinking about. So I thought this was a great blog post. Be sure to check it out. Links as always down in the description below, as well as some links for some bonus items. Go check it out. Chrissy Dees from Power Pivot Pro has got a blog post for you talking about an introduction to Microsoft Flow. If you didn't know, Microsoft Flow is part of the Power Platform, and this blog post walks you through how to get started with it. Microsoft Flow can absolutely be used with your BI solution. It can empower it, take data, do actions, just get things done for your business that take that solution to the next level, and we like that here. So be sure to check out this blog post. As always, links down below. Cosper de Jong's got a blog post looking at variables inside of DAX. I love this. This is really important. You should absolutely take a look at this. If you're not using variables in DAX, you need to look at this. Variables can absolutely help you from a performance perspective, from a readability perspective, and just making things cleaner, especially if you need to debug what is going on with your DAX statement. So be sure to check out this blog post. Use variables if you're not and help to improve the performance of your reports and your data model. One of the things I love when I go to conferences, I will ask a question at a talk I'm giving, if it's relevant, how many people are using Publish to Web? And a ton of people raise their hands. And not knowing that it's not really secure. In fact, it's not secure at all. Power BI's got an announcement for secure embed. What is that? This is an embed option that is a no-code option where you can embed items where you traditionally would from a publish to web perspective. So anywhere, it's just an iframe and it will enable security for you. So if you put this in a web page, it comes up, it'll prompt you to sign in if you're not already signed in. That's amazing. So all of these scenarios where you wanted to use publish to web because you don't wanna write all that heavy code, maybe you're not a developer, you can now use Secure Embed. This blog post does a great job of showing you how to use the feature as well as using the URL query strings to pass in things like which page you wanna show and also passing in those URL filters. That all works with this Secure Embed option. As of the recording of this video over the weekend, it, I didn't see it in production yet, but you can expect to see it soon. Just keep checking, it will be there 
before you know it. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. What was your favorite item this week? Maybe it was something I talked about, maybe it wasn't. Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below and let me know. For me, it was Secure Embed. This is a great feature and an awesome alternative to publish to web, so very excited about that. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.